Hey guys, Dr. Richard Alm here. I want to thank you for coming to the workshop that we did last weekend at CrossFit Grandview. I want to extend a special thanks to Brandon and also Dave for bringing me in. Hope you enjoyed the course. I wanted to kind of go over some things, you know, in a video here to kind of, you know, sort of solidify them in your mind. Um, I want to talk about the, the phases of the swing so you guys can get that down. And then I want to really want to talk about, you know, the float phase, which is the sign of a really, really good swing. So the phases of a swing, I step back here so that you can kind of see everything. You're going to basically have, you know, the beginning where you have the hike phase, and that's where you hike it back to that target. Then you're going to have a drive phase. You're going to have the float phase where the bell goes, when you get tall, that ends the drive phase. Then you have the float phase where you have the ascent, and then you have the descent. And as the bell drops by, down by your belly, you're going to hinge forward into the hinge phase, and then you're going to squat down back into the bottom, and then you'd go right back into the drive phase. So other than the hike in the park, there's a drive phase, a float phase, a hinge phase, and a squat phase. And if you remember, the, the signs of a really, really good swing are having a long float phase where you're staying tall and the bell is floating up and floating down. What's so crucial about that phase is number one, it's the time where you can relax. So you're not really working hard. The bell is technically just floating up into space and back down. You're not under the load of the bell. It's also the time when you can actually take a breath in. So metabolically, it requires almost no energy. That's also when you can get your breath in to get that, ox that CO2 out and that oxygen back in for your swings. So that float phase is absolutely crucial just for performance. Now, in terms of the breathing, people get a little bit confused, but remember, you're breathing out when you hit the top, and you breathe back in when the bell hits its apex. So it's out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. And if you recall, many of you guys brought up that you feel like you're hyperventilating. That's probably because you don't have a very long float phase. So if you're pulling on the bell and your float phase is very short, it's gonna be out in, out in, out in. And that's a great way to sort of drive CO2 concentration in your blood up. You're gonna feel very, very anxious and you're gonna feel like you're hyperventilating. So the main thing I want you to get out of this quick little video to remind you is how to have a long float phase. Remember, there's two ways that you can make your float phase longer. One, is having a more ballistic drive phase, so from the hole to the standing position, the quicker and more accurately you get into that position, the faster the bell is moving and the longer float phase that you're gonna have, okay? So the first one is a strong drive straight into the ground. Remember, we're not pushing our hips forward, we're not leaning back to, to pull the bell, it's a straight drive into the ground like you're trying to break the ceiling with your head, okay? Once you're there, to make the, the float phase even longer, is you want to have a late hinge phase. That means that the bell is going to be almost down by your, your, your abdomen before you start to hinge. That does a couple things. One, it lengthens your float phase so you have more time to breathe. But two, it's going to let the bell drop down closer to your spine so that you're loading better, so that you can have a nice, you know, efficient, Hinge phase, squat phase, and then drive phase. The bell's out in front of you like this, puts a ton of strain on your back, and it's gonna make your drive out a hole very, very weak and soft. So remember, the two ways to have a longer float phase are a quick and explosive drive into the vertical position and a late hinge, okay? So I'll kind of show you a few swings right here that I want you to focus on where you can kind of practice this. And you can work on having a good drive phase or having a late hinge and eventually you'll just get better and better and better at it and you can have both, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you're doing, I guess I'll do an early hinge. Like we all know you gotta drive out of the hole. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you have an early hinge. It looks soft, you're bent forward, you're in a really, really bad position. So I'll give you three reps like that. So this is an early hinge. Here, just like this, remember we got that equilateral triangle. I'm gonna be out like this, I'm gonna hike, hike, drive, early hinge, early hinge, early hinge, okay? When I do that, 
the bell's down by my chest and I'm already going forward. Puts a lot of strain on my back, the bell's gonna pull me onto my toes and I'm gonna have to use a lot of my back muscles, which we don't want. We wanna line the bell up right with your spine vertically so that you can handle that load, okay? That's why a late hinge is so important. So now I'm gonna do five with a late hinge. Notice the bell drops down until it's right in front of my abdomen or even my pelvis. So now it's in line with my torso. And by the time I finish my hinge phase, it's perfectly lined up with my spine for maximum efficiency of my leg drive going into the bell, okay? So five reps with a late hinge. Here like this. So you can see I'm waiting until the bell's down here. I'm gonna hinge, the bell continues to move closer to my body. Once I'm kind of at a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna squat down and then go into the drive. So there's a million things that I could have talked about, but I thought about it and really, I want you guys to understand the one thing. I want you guys to get a good float phase. And remember, the two ways to do that are a more ballistic vertical drive into the tall position or standing position and a late hinge. So practice those with a, a medium weight bell. If it's too light, you can do too much with it. It's too easy, you can't feel it. And you can work on either one of those, a straight ballistic drive out of the hole or a late hinge. Put those in your warm-ups a couple days a week and before you know it, you'll have a beautiful float phase and those kettlebells will start being lighter and lighter and lighter. And if you're doing CrossFit, you'll notice that metabolically they're nowhere nearly as taxing. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please uh, contact us um, you know, at the link below here. We're here to help and hopefully we'll see you at the next seminar.